number three, no surprise to you, huge return on investment with exercise. Huge. This is risk of cardiovascular disease or risk of diabetes or risk of anything you want except cancer. It's a different story. That's a straight line. It's not curvilinear like this, but just know cardiovascular disease, diabetes, any metabolic condition, it looks like this. This is real data. And what we're looking at here is fitness and risk of something bad happening to you. Let's break this down. Look at that. It's curvilinear. It's not linear. If you're a couch potato and you become a walker, look what you do to your risk. It plummets. If you're a 10K -er and you want to go run a marathon and you increase your fitness level, hey, awesome. It's an awesome life challenge. But you're not reducing your risk anymore. Again, think about, in particular, sick populations, older populations, you might feel bad because you're not pushing them as hard as you think you should. It doesn't matter. Just getting off the couch is a victory. This is, you know, you get some of these older populations that are right on the edge of disability. You know what? Instead of 150 minutes, it might be 70 minutes. Just get them out of the steep part of that curve. Huge return on investment with, with, with a little bit of exercise. Again, especially for the elderly, the very, very, very sedentary, and those with medical conditions. So one of the research studies I want to talk about, it's a little bit older now, but for, for this talk, I think it's perfect because of the, the base concept we're going to talk about. It's called DREW. DREW was the largest exercise trial ever conducted in postmenopausal women. It was a dose response study, 464 postmenopausal women. There was a control group, it was six months in duration. There was a group that got half the consensus recommendation for physical activity, a group that got 100% of the consensus, and a group that got 150% of the consensus. It was dose response. It was exactly what you do for a pharmaceutical um, trial, which remarkably is rare in the world of exercise. And, and you know, it was really, to get at, you know, what's the optimal dose of exercise. So I'm going to come back to this a few times, which is why I want to at least set it up a little bit. By the way, we had 99% compliance. All exercise was supervised in front of us. Every, I think it was 20 plus thousand exercise sessions. Heart rate monitors. By the way, we had activity monitors on people for outside. This is before activity monitors were on your wrist. And and you know what happens when you exercise people? You know what happens to the rest of their activity? Do they do more? Do they do less? They don't change a thing. Why would you? You've got the same job. You've got the same kids. Unless you're a gazillionaire, you don't have a whole bunch of freedom in your schedule. I've looked at this over and over and over again. People who become more active in the gym, the rest of their life generally, it's the same amount of activity. So the point being, what I'm going to show you is what I'm going to show you. This is not, there, there's no research error involved in it. This was change in fitness after six months. So control group, which we're going to come back to, the group that did 72 minutes a week. The primary form of exercise was walking, and it was at 50% of their VO2. So it was a heart rate associated with 50% of the VO2. This was, this was meant to be very clinically applicable. 72 minutes a week, 136 minutes a week, 192. Nice dose response. The more you do, the more you benefit. No surprise. But here's the two main stories. I cannot emphasize enough, if you're elderly, if you're sick, and if you do nothing, it's not this. It's this. Especially like type 2 diabetics. So when you get someone active, you get someone working, the first thing is you're just hoping to hold serve. But then you're really hoping to get them better. But this was what the press loved. The group that did 72 minutes a week of walking. Break it down. It wasn't done in 10 minutes a day, but you could say 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day of walking. They not only maintain their fitness, they actually improve their fitness over just six months. So two big take-home messages. Again, 
huge return on investment. If you do nothing, bad things are happening. So picture number three. A little exercise goes a long way. The goal may be 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity physical activity, and John's going to talk, John Jacques is going to talk about this multiple times this week. I strongly suggest you go see that. Uh, it, it, but, you know, he's going to really dive into this. The goal may be 150 minutes a week of walking per week, but make no mistake, something is better than nothing.